topic is the revolution in Egypt and its impact upon surrounding Arab nations. Uh, Dr. Madhu, uh, let's uh, pick up where we left off the last mm -hmm. time and to give you an opportunity to continue talking about the impact yep. that this revolution has already had upon Arab states. Go mm -hmm. on and give us that information. Like I said, you know, the, 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 the kingdom of Morocco, you know, also faces a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Like I said, in the mid-70s, you know, the, the, the king at that time, Hassan, you know, was nearly overthrown twice. Uh, the first time in 71, uh, having his birthday at his seaside party, soldiers mm. bust in there to assassinate him. Over 100 were killed. They miraculously escaped. Mm -hmm. Then in 1972, his Minister of Defense, General Mohammed Ufkeh, you know, organized a coup and then nearly shot his plane out of the sky. Mm -hmm. They miraculously escaped and had everybody executed. You know. So there has been opposition to the, 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 the regime you know, in Morocco for a long time. So even when the son came in, you know, King Mohammed VI mm -hmm. in 1999, he made some cosmetic changes, you know what I mean here, mm -hmm. he released some political prisoners and you mm -hmm. know it, but still underneath, mm -hmm. people want, com you know, complete reform, mm -hmm. they, they want a, a constitutional monarchy mm -hmm. instead of an absolute monarchy mm -hmm. like you have there now. Mm -hmm. uh, corruption, you know, bring people to book about, the king spends about, uh, $750,000 a day to maintain his residences. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for such a country, yeah, think <laughs> about that. Yes, a day to maintain the royal palaces and households mm -hmm. and concubines and you name it. Mm -hmm. you know. Now you move over to Syria, the same. Syria has been under the rule of one family since about 1971. Mm -hmm. uh, Hafez al-Assad, mm -hmm. uh, the father of the current president, you know, came to power through a coup mm -hmm. in 71. Uh, he was there till he died in 2000. Mm -hmm. When he died in 2000, he handed over to his son, Bashar mm -hmm. al-Assad, mm -hmm. as president. Mm -hmm. Bashar is still in power now. There have been demonstrations mm -hmm. in, 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 in Syria, mm -hmm. you know, for economic and political reforms. You know, mm -hmm. Syria is a, a very repressive government. Mm -hmm. Syria is one place, you know, I think some profound might happen. Mm -hmm. uh, though Assad's family has been there from 71, mm -hmm. you know, through a repressive political apparatus. Mm -hmm. But they are running a minority regime. Mm -hmm. In Islam, you know, you have different sects. Mm -hmm. The Assad family comes from the Alawite sect, mm -hmm. which is a syncretic form of Islam. Mm -hmm. The majority, you know, of, of, of Syrians are Sunni. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 1982, uh, a Sunni, you know, Islamic movement you know, started a rebellion in the city of Hama. Mm -hmm. uh, over 10,000 were slaughtered, according to reports, mm -hmm. in, in a few days by Assad soldiers mm -hmm. to crush that Sunni movement. So that group is now reorganizing, mm -hmm. you know, again, you know, mm -hmm. to, to try and remove the government of, of Assad and his family. Mm -hmm. So that's a place to watch. Mm -hmm. In Bahrain, mm -hmm. you know, Bahrain is one that is causing the U U.S. government a lot of problems now. Bahrain is the headquarters of the U.S. Fifth Fleet mm -hmm. in the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. you know. And so it threatens America's interest, what happens there. Mm -hmm. The problem, or what makes Bahrain's case interesting, mm -hmm. is Bahrain is also a minority-ruled mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. the, the, the royal family, the caliphs, mm -hmm. you know, are Sunnis. Mm -hmm. But the majority of Bahrain is Shiites, mm -hmm. the same kind of Islam you have in Iran. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it makes it very difficult, you know, for, the, for them to retain power mm -hmm. outside using repressive measures. Mm -hmm. Because the majority, even if there's democratic vote, they, they are out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The shares will still mm -hmm. vote them out. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's creating a whole lot of concern how the Obama government administration, mm -hmm. you know, balances our interest in mm -hmm. keeping that place safe for mm -hmm. our fleet mm -hmm. and sometimes supporting the democratic aspirations of the, the of, majority, the, yeah. exactly, of the Bahraini people. It's mm -hmm. very tricky. Mm -hmm. So right now, some about five have been killed in the demonstrations mm -hmm. and 200 wounded. You know, there are tanks mm -hmm. on the street and, and all mm -hmm. that. So that's a very tricky situation. In Kuwait, you know, there's also demonstrations mm -hmm. in Kuwait. Remember, Kuwait is also mm -hmm. a repressive society. Mm -hmm. You know, whichever way you look at it. Uh -huh, they, a place where women, you know, can't even drive mm -hmm. and all that. So it's also very tricky mm -hmm. because Kuwait, 
you know, it's close to Iran. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very tricky and we've situation. we've been there before. And yeah. we've been there before, mm -hmm. you know. And there are some demonstrations in Iran now, mm -hmm. like you've read in the paper. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're trying to, to, to stop it mm -hmm. from happening. However, you know, Iran is different in a way from the other regimes, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the Arab world, in that there is a, an institutionalized theocracy, mm -hmm. you know, that runs the country. Mm -hmm. It's not depending on one strong man like mm -hmm. Mubarak or, or Gaddafi, mm -hmm. you know. They have a group they, of individuals. Exactly, mm -hmm. you have an institution, mm -hmm. you know, you have the presidency, you have the, the Velayat al-Figi, you know, mm -hmm. who is the supreme leader, then mm -hmm. the Council of Guardians and the Parliament, mm -hmm. the Majlis which some of these other places don't have, mm -hmm. you know, as an institution. Mm -hmm. So in Iran, the demonstrators will be challenging an institution. Well, in other it, countries, it, it, mm -hmm. exactly, the demonstrator will be challenging mm -hmm. an individual who represents, you know, the, the power structure. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Palestinian territories, you know, are kind of quiet now. I don't think they have anything to demonstrate for mm -hmm. or against. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Abbas is trying to, you know, do a good job of mm -hmm. keeping a lead on, on terrorists mm -hmm. uh, who, who are now living in Gaza, you know, under the rule of the Hamas. That's what's troubling the U.S. government, too, about mm -hmm. what's happening in Egypt, because Egypt shares a border with, with Gaza mm -hmm. and Hamas. And Mubarak has been very instrumental in keeping an eye, you know, on mm -hmm. Hamas terrorists mm -hmm. in, in, in Gaza to keep things quiet. So if you look at the overall situation, mm -hmm. one wonders what are our interests? What's our interest mm -hmm. in that area? Now, our interest is maintenance of stability, you know, both for economic reasons, both for political reasons. Mm -hmm. For example, the treaty between Egypt and Israel is a cornerstone you know, of U.S. policy, mm -hmm. you know, peace policy in the Middle East. If that, you know, if that treaty mm -hmm. unravels, there will be a whole lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are worried about what comes next. Mm -hmm. That's why we are kind of skept skeptical mm -hmm. about supporting other, mm -hmm. you know, in, you know, demonstrations mm -hmm. in the, in those countries until we see how exactly how it is. things mm -hmm. turn out in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who takes over? We want to be on the right side of history. Exactly, that's, what we're that's correct. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we're on the right side. So mm -hmm. we are watching how the Egyptian army mm -hmm. conducts itself, you know, if political prisoners are released, mm -hmm. if genuine economic reforms are enacted, mm -hmm. if opposition leaders are allowed to contest mm -hmm. the election, all these things are important, and most of them haven't happened yet. Mm -hmm. So people are getting concerned. For example, there are some called emergency law 58, mm -hmm. which Mubarak has used to detain people. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are over 17,000 people detained in Egypt now under that law mm -hmm. that need to be released. Mm -hmm. I remember a few days before Mubarak, you know, stepped down, Omar Suleiman said, well, we have to take our time before repealing that law because mm -hmm. you have 17,000 people on the street. Mm -hmm. These are people who are detained mm -hmm. because of... Um, exactly, for protesting their rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. not because... Political they to, um, prisoners. Exactly. exactly. Any, anybody, you, you know, if mm -hmm. you, all you need to do is say something bad about Mubarak or the government, you are arrested mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. detained, mm -hmm. no trial. So that law needs to go. It's not, it has not been you mm -hmm. know, repealed. Mm -hmm. So people are watching to see what the army does. And forget that the Egyptian army, mm -hmm. you know, like most Middle Eastern armies, have an economic interest mm -hmm. in what happens in Egypt. Mm -hmm. A lot of corporations and companies are run and owned by mm -hmm. the military establishment. Mm -hmm. And right now, the, the, the national financial institutions are saying that the Mubarak regime, or even his family, mm -hmm. you know, looted between 50 to 70 billion dollars mm -hmm. in these 30 years. Because every contract that, you know, comes into Egypt, even mm -hmm. through the military, the family also gets some kickback. Mm -hmm. Now, Swiss, Switzerland has said they've, you know, seized some assets mm -hmm. belonging to the Mubarak family. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure other countries will do the same. Though he's still in Sham el Sheikh now, mm -hmm. but all indications are that he won't be there for long. Mm -hmm. Because as far as he stays in the country, mm -hmm. there will still be some fear amongst you that he might come mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So they're still insisting. That he, he leaves the country mm -hmm. completely and goes, you know, into mm -hmm. exile somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, Dr. Madhu, uh, this e e Egyptian revolution is still an influx in a real sense. I mean, it's sort of, uh, there's no real indication as to where this thing might lead because the army is still sort of reluctant to deal with this, to, to remove this, this, this law. That's correct. Is that what we're saying? Is that the United States has to work within that uh, framework. And, mm -hmm. of course, Dr. Madhu, we're coming to the end of this show today, mm -hmm. and you understand what we have to do here. Uh, 
and, and, and but I do, do want to thank you for that information mm -hmm. and uh, that I think it does give us some idea in terms of the uh, chaos in the real mm -hmm. sense that uh, that the United States has to deal with as part of our policy there. And of course, uh, let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.